I guess there wasn't any other way for this story to end. Uh, what's going on, everybody? It's Uche Winery, your observant lineman. And uh, Tara Fuller, the kicker from Vanderbilt. She scored an extra point, a couple of extra points uh, the other week uh, against Tennessee. In the week, uh, a few weeks before that, she scored or she kicked off a squib kick in uh, the Commodores' blowout loss to Missouri. Well, this story now ends with an enshrinement. And uh, as of yesterday, Sarah Fuller has been enshrined into the College Football Hall of Fame. As you can see here, the College Football Hall of Fame tweets out on display uh, the, is the uniform of Vanderbilt football kicker Sarah Fuller, who made history as the first female uh, to play and score in a Power 5 college football game. Congrats, Sarah, and thanks for entrust, thank you for entrusting us with the safekeeping of this rich piece of history. Oh, my God. Are we being serious here? This woman kicked a 27-yard kickoff. This woman kicked an extra point. Uh, she did not really, you know, do anything that's so noteworthy that it should be enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. And why do I say that? I say that because there are a litany of other female kickers who participated on football teams as an actual member of that team from the beginning to the end of their career and their football seasons, uh, respectively, uh, in the college level. This is absurd. They're taking this to a level it doesn't need to go to. The College Football Hall of Fame? Are you serious? And, you know, look, we're going to take a look at a couple of, uh, uh, really one other scenario in particular that I can directly compare to this Sarah Fuller situation and how it's played out. And really, when you compare them side to side, there's no comparison in the level of skill between these two female athletes. Not in the slightest. Yet one is being given a Hall of Fame treatment and the other is being given pff, nothing even close to this. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, some of the replies here. And, you know, it, it's... it's it just kind of baffles me that this is the end result of all of this. They put her her uniform, which is squeaky clean, not a not a not a not a spot on it. Her uniform on display in the College Football Hall of Fame. I mean, I, I just can't I can't make I can't make sense of this because from what I understand, the Hall of Fame on every level of of of, of sports is considered to be it's, it's considered to be a shrine for the very best of the very best. The Hall of Fame is a, is is a, is a institution in sports in ev in anything that is reserved for the very 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 best that there is in any respective uh sport or activity and this just does not fit the bill it doesn't fit the bill we look at some of these replies here and it's you know it, it's 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 a mix of people who are seeing it as, as a total joke and it's a mix of people who are trying to uh basically talk down to those who see it as, as a total joke uh you know, for instance, what's significant about this moment? She's the third female kicker to ever play in a Division I college football game. The first two actually earned their way onto the team and weren't anywhere near as publicized. Frankly, and this is another person, frankly, much ado about very little. Trendy, in my opinion. Excessive publicity given to so little, overshadowing what the rest of team experiences and preparing and playing. My opinion. So this is out of proportion and overblown. However, I am open to any person who meets standard. <clears throat> wow. Uh, is the first female to ever kick in there too? Or do we only care about the power five being decades behind even other D1 levels? Asking for a friend. Uh... <laughs> Uh, this one, this this rep response, I believe, I mean, props to Fuller, but let's give every female at every level that much respect. 
Just because Power 5 was decades behind everyone else is not something to be proud of. Uh, let's see. Then you have people who are saying, this is incredible. Anyone in these comments who says otherwise can just delete their Twitter and keep their negative crap to themselves. She's a baller. She was not the first female to score in a Power 5 game. Uh, do two seconds of research and you would know that. Shake my head. Uh, who is then? Katie Hnida played, uh, Katie Hnida played for UNM, which is not Power 5. Is there any, is there another I'm missing? Actually, uh, Katie Hnida played for the University of Colorado, which is in the Power 5 as it's in the Big 12 Conference. Uh, then she transferred to the University of New Mexico. So there's a little bit of a difference there, uh, for people if they're wondering where this really comes in. Uh, this person here says, stop trying to create history where there isn't any. Power five isn't even a designation. She's the third division one kicker and a poor one at that. Vandy is a joke. Oh, and why did they have her? Uh, oh, and why did they have their punter kick the 39 yarder? Uh, and they're alluding to the other kicker on the Vanderbilt team uh, who actually kicked the 39 yard field goal. Now, that's enough of this with Twitter. Let me move over to this so people can actually see a little bit of a representation uh, as to the truth of the matter when it comes to this entire overblown saga for Sarah Fuller. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, college, let's look at college. Uh, co females in college football. Uh, and this is obviously on Wikipedia, but it says almost all of the women who played on predominantly male college and professional football teams have done so by playing either the place kicker or holder positions. Both positions are rarely involved in the full contact present in American football. Uh, <clears throat> so I won't, you know, I will go through some of these names, but not really all of them. Obviously, you have here uh, uh, Sarah Fuller, first woman to play in a Power Five football game, and then you have here uh, Tony Harris, first woman football player to receive a full college scholarship offer at Central Methodist University. Uh, Liz Heaston, first woman to play and score in a college football game. Katie Hnida, first woman to score in an NCAA Division I college football game. Uh, and really, for me, the most notable here, Tanya Butler. Tanya Butler is the first woman to score a field goal in an NCAA double a game and over here i have tanya butler's uh profile on wikipedia and just a couple of quick uh couple of quick notes about uh what she accomplished as a kicker and we can directly compare the level of skill between her and sarah fuller with this information here and it says <clears throat> Okay, let me get, it says, after uh, graduating Georgia Southern, former Georgia College head coach Randy Pippen, who is now the head coach of West Alabama, offered Butler a scholarship to serve as place kicker for the ti Tigers. With two years of eligibility re remaining, she enrolled as a graduate student and won the, star and won the starting place, kicking, place kicker position for the Tigers 2003 season. She won the job. She was the best for this uh, West Alabama team. In the first game of the season, Butler scored on a 27-yard field goal attempt against Stillman with 9.41 remaining in the, in the first quarter. Although initially unconfirmed by the NCAA as, as, as gender was not differentiated in, in their all-time records, it was later confirmed that Butler was the first female to score a field goal in college football. Butler served as place kicker for both the 2003 and 2004 seasons, playing for West Alabama. For her career, she made 13 of 19 field goal attempts with a long kick of 39 yards and 48 of 53 in extra point attempts. Her 50 total points made during the 2003 season led the, uh, led the squad, and she was named special teams captain in both her years at West Alabama. Butler was also named uh, Academic All Gulf South, South Conference in 2004 and graduated in 2005 with a master's degree in psychology and counseling. In January 2006, her West Alabama helmet, jersey, and cleats were displayed at the NCAA Hall of Champions in Indianapolis in recognition of her accomplishments as a student athlete. 
Butler held the record for most points scored by a female college football player with 87 through the 2010 season when Brittany Ryan from Lebanon Valley College established the new mark. Now, a couple things I want to point out. One, this woman scored 87 points. She she kicked a long of 39 yards uh, uh, in, in regards to a field goal uh, for West Alabama. She was 48 of 53 on extra points. Her helmet, cleats, and uniform are in the Hall of Champions. Not the Hall of Fame, where they really, if you want to make an argument head-to-head, -head, that's where they belong. Because can we argue that West Alabama could potentially beat uh, Vanderbilt? Yes, I think we could. I think we could. And if it came down to a kick to a field goal, head-to-head, -head, Tanya Butler would win out. I think we know that. She's kicked a 39-yarder. She matched the men, the man, the male uh, the male kicker from Vanderbilt kicked a 39-yarder last week. She has kicked a 39-yarder. Tanya Butler. And yet her uniform, her helmet, her cleats, her gloves, her entire being is not being praised or being enshrined in the Hall of Fame greatness. But Sarah Fuller, who kicked an extra point that was not rushed, who kicked a 27-yard field or, or kickoff that was not returned, is being enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. Utter bullshit, really unnecessary, and just shows how the media can take control of, of one single story and turn it into a fiasco, turn it into a circus that now we have to sit here and look at all of these other women who have accomplished great things as football players, truly. I was surprised to read that she had a long kick of 39 yards. Tanya Butler, she did a damn good job and she won her position. That's impressive, that is to be praised. That is to be praised. That is where a woman who has, 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 has went against the odds and earned a role on a team and earned the respect of her teammates. She's probably won games for her team. Those are the people who should be receiving the kind of praise we're seeing Sarah Fuller get right now. I can't understand it, and for the life of me, uh, I think it's just uh, terribly, uh, just terribly sad and terribly uh, uh, unfair to someone like Tanya Butler. Who, who had, who's a footnote. She's a footnote in this entire, uh, 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 this entire uh, melodrama of Sarah Fuller. She doesn't have any, any of the recognition and she's done 10 times the work and had 10 times the accomplishments. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the Observant Lyman Uche Winery if you haven't already done so. Appreciate you guys for checking this out. Uh, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little bothered by this. It's a little irritating. So I had to kind of get this out there. To me, this was just too far. This was it was laughable before, but now it's just too far. This is ridiculous. And, you know, I just want to bring light uh to uh, bring light to a person, an individual who actually did do something very special and very impressive as a female football player. I'm your observant lineman, Uche Wanari, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.